So our top trending story today um, starts off, you know, from the weekend. And in fact, we can even stretch this back all to 2015 with the whole controversy surrounding the Olu of Wari. But um, bringing it back, you know, closer, um, the timeline, we know that the um, the coronation of the Olu of Wari happened over the weekend. It was a very big celebration, widely celebrated across Nigeria, speci specifically in Delta State. And um, it, was a, it was an event that attracted wide attention. And one of the reasons why there was such a buzz around it was the fact that um, people saw an Olu of Wari that praised God in the Christian way, you know, singing songs to God, you know, and his speech that, you know, made people say, hmm, this is a king that should, you know, that people should notice. This is a king that people should definitely look up to. This is someone who seems like a role model. This is someone who seems intelligent, who knows what he wants, who is articulate. So all these great adjectives that people have used to describe him, and you really can see why when you l listen to him speak. You know, so, but the, the top trending story here is about respect for authority because we saw Nigeria's former president, Lucia Go Basanjo, kneel down before the Olu of Wari. That's a video of him there walking towards him. He approaches the king and he takes a knee. He kneels down and he taps him on the leg repeatedly. I mean, that video really has made the rounds, gone viral on social media, people making statements. People have criticized him for that. I really would not want to speak about his motives because people have said this and that about his motives. I really am not in his mind and I wouldn't be able to speak about that. But what I can comment based on what I've seen really is about the respect for the authority, the respect for the throne, regardless of who sits on it, regardless of age, regardless of personality, regardless of status. And that really is what the conversation is about. Yeah, I'm not even sure why anybody's criticizing if they're, you know, well, let me not say what I want to say. But, um, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, you know, what exactly there is to criticize there. You know, if you don't have personal issues with Obasanjo or uh, you don't have, you know, pro pro problems at home. Um, there's, there's absolutely nothing, you know, there to criticize. It makes absolutely no sense. But, yeah, um, so the weekend was, it, so, so the whole of the coronation for me felt like, it, it, it felt like the, the best part of, I mean, how do I say this? You know, it, it felt like for a very, very long time, I had not really had that level of good feeling with regards to anything concerning Nigeria until this weekend. It was such a memorable occasion. It was such a beautiful occasion from the day that it started until the end. Every single detail of it, the tradition, the things that he had to, you know, the rights that he had to also, you know, pass through before he was eventually crowned king. His story, he's just 37 years old. Um, you know, how all of this came together, you know, for this day. Um, there's different angles, like you've mentioned, the part where, you know, he is a Christian and he had to, he also worshipped, sang, you know, some gospel songs, some, you know, Christian songs, made some statements also. I hope that I will have time to quote. But it was just a very, very rich and beautiful event. And you can see from everybody whose um, attention was focused on worry over the weekend that it was, it was celebration all through. There was nothing else but people just being entirely excited about what was happening on that day. Politically, it was a weekend where Nigeria's political elite had to choose between Kano and Wari. Um, for those who had to go to Kano and those so who the wedding decided of the to president's to, Exactly. And, and I was saying it to myself yesterday that you can never place both on the same level of importance. You know, one of, one of them is a wedding. The other one is a coronation of a traditional ruler in Nigeria. And for those who made a decision of which to go to, you can really almost tell what their interests are with regards to Nigeria's uh, journey forward. Um, and so when you see the video of Obasanjo going down to Neil, it really has told you what his own interest is um, in the bigger picture. Um, going for a wedding to go shake hands and, you know, you're not the MC, neither are you, you know, seven drinks at the wedding. Um, and, and so, you know, it, it, it's, it's also very, very important that you use, basically state, you know, where your political interests uh, really, really lie. Um, kneeling before the king also told the story of a person who understands political power but still also understands traditional power and where you know and, and, and understands you know that there is a balance between both and knows that no matter how much of a political warlord you are you should still understand and you know respect the power of the next person and that's what the passenger really showed here it wasn't necessarily kneeling before 
uh, the man himself was kneeling before the throne. But of course, it's that 37-year-old man who currently sits on that throne. And so it was respect to that traditional authority that it really showed. And I, it, I posted on my Instagram, and I said that this is, for me, was the, one of the best pictures from the um, whole of the weekend. And maybe one of the best pictures we've seen in 2021, out of anything concerning Nigeria. There was other things that happened over the weekend. There were people who were <laughs> killed, people who were abducted. There was so much else that went, you know, went on. There was a wedding in Kano. But most importantly, there was a very, very beautiful, rich, traditional culture um, um, a coronation that took place in Wari. Um, one of the things that he said, in, I quote him, he says, I bring down the government of heaven into this land. Um, I'm talking about the Olu now. He also spoke about uniting the, um, the Ishekiri people and the youths across the whole of the Niger Delta. He spoke also about, um, you know, he reversed the curse that was placed by, you know, uh, the Olu of many hundreds of years ago. He um, also spoke, uh, conferred titles on, on his mom and his wife. There was so much. And you can see it from his composure, the way he carried himself, that this really was not just some riffraff that they threw into that position. He, 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 he was, was ready for able it. to hold the power that really comes with being the Olu of Wari. It was too beautiful. There were so many other traditional, the Oni of Ife was also present, I, I believe. Uh, there were also people from the Oba of Benin's palace. I didn't get to see the Oba of Benin there, but I saw people from his palace also there. Um, th there's nothing you know, really more to say you know, concerning this, but it, it was a truly beautiful um, weekend for me. Yes, and after that event, there was an interview he granted to the BBC in which he really detailed his life and journey up until that moment, talking about how he looked up to his father and, you know, just watched, you know. So some questions he was asked, you know, bordered around if he was trained for this, if he was groomed for this, nurtured to be Ulu one day. And he said it wasn't, it wasn't per se like a, like a, an institutional thing where he, you know, there were people who would point this out and guide you. I mean, that was your role to do that. He said, no, that what happened in his own case was that he was able to observe what was happening and he caught things, especially from his father. And that there would definitely be a traditional ruler who would say, I hope you're taking note of this. I hope you're observing yeah. that. And he was able to, you know, tune himself to the events of the palace and watch closely to learn. He also mentioned that he wasn't a law of worry to wear the crown, sit on the throne and look pretty that he was there really to market Ishakiri um, before a board of business leaders, political leaders, and to really milk the resources of the monarchy. That there's a lot of resources that can be generated you know, from that, and that he was looking to make Wari sovereign in, 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 a, in a way. In, sen in, the, in the sense of, you know, just making sure that all the resources that can be generated from Ishakiri, from the Niger Delta, you know, is generated and that the people get to benefit from it. So lots of prospects for this Olu. Yeah. And I can't wait to really see what worry becomes, what, what, you know, Delta State becomes with um, this, new, this new king he, as he head. Also, he also mentioned that the, the, um, the riches from the Niger Delta are, is not just oil, and they need to stop focusing Definitely. on just oil. They have a lot of young people. You know, there's, there's so human many... Human resources of, you know, is, is, human is always resources. the priority, yes. Absolutely. He, so he mentioned that he also, of course, brought, spoke about peace, uh, spoke about uniting, you know, other parts of the Niger Delta and, you know, moving, moving forward. So... Um, Political elite, once again, I would never fail to mention that part, made a decision this weekend. And you can really just tell who went where and, you know, what their interests really are with regards, you know, where Nigeria is. If it's is. regarding that, I really wouldn't condemn anybody for choosing one. I mean, that's their oh, choice. But the issue is the coronation happened and it was a beautiful event to watch. Absolutely.